Hey guys, it's Bobby here. I wanted to make a video uh, today about some Kirby vacuum cleaners. I had a request on Vacuum Land to show my Kirby's in action, so I figured instead of doing the laundry, which I need to do but hate to do, I would make a video about Kirby's. So these are my four Kirby's. Okay, so I have the Kirby Dual Sanitronic 80, uh, the Heritage 2, the G5, and the Centria. Okay. So let's see a little history about each one. Um, I actually got the Heritage first, then the Dual Sanitronic, and then the G5, and then the Centria. Um, the Dual Sanitronic, I was in high school and I was driving home and these very nice Jamaican people were having a yard sale and I saw a vacuum cleaner handle sticking up and of course that's my automatic signal to turn the car around, so I did. And it was like 10 bucks or something, so I got it. And it was in pretty good shape. One of the back wheels has a crack. Um, it's a radial crack, though, not a linear crack. So it, whenever I um, push it, it kind of sinks down. I need to replace that. I thought about replacing the bag because it's old and faded, but I think with that vacuum, the faded bag actually looks better than the brand new one. The brand new one is just so dark, it looks unnatural. So I might just keep that bag, actually. It's got one small tear in the bottom, but I sewed it up. So, you know, I know it's not going to filter dust very well, but I don't think uh, that shakeout bag vacuums did anyway. So... It's just for fun. Um, Heritage 2, I don't like it. I barely use it. Uh, it's not self-propelled, and since Kirby now has self-propelled vacuums, I feel weird using anything that is this new that's not self-propelled. It just seems kind of weird to me. It's just big and bulky, and I, don't, I know some people love them. Some people love all Kirbys. I'm not a fanatic about them. I don't hate them. I just, I mean, they're okay, but, uh, you know, I'm not obsessed with them. Um, but this vacuum is kind of from my childhood. Um, when I was growing up at church, um, the first church I had, we had a red bag to Heritage 1, and then my babysitter actually had the same exact machine here, this, uh, Heritage 2, and then she got a G3 later, but, uh, so I remember being, like, four years old and trying to push that beast across the floor. It was not easy, but I sure tried. So, anyway, the other one is the G5. I forgot that on Craigslist, uh, for, like, $200 several years ago, maybe four or five years, um, and it works okay, but several months ago I got the Centria for 60 bucks, so I don't need that anymore. I don't need the G5 much anymore. Plus the brush roll in the G5 is worn out, so I just really prefer the Centria. I like the handle a lot better. It's just curved more. It's more whimsical. It just looks better. Um, and it works better because it has the staggered brush roll instead of the chevron brush roll. So I, I think it actually does a better job. So um, I use that now. The G5 uh, has the attachments, as does the Heritage. The other two don't. But uh, no shampooer, but a friend gave me his G4 shampooer, which fits, but I don't like that shampooer. So uh, when I shampoo, I use the Hoover steam vac. But I did use the G5 recently. I was cleaning, I was steam cleaning with the Hoover for a relative, and their carpets were filthy. They live in a country where there's sand and dirt, and they have a dog. It's a mess. So anyway, I didn't want to mess up my Centria, so I swapped the brush roll, because I knew the, the Kirby brush roll was bad on the G5. And it really did a good job. It got the sand from deep out of their carpet. Actually, when I vacuumed their carpet, there was an imprint of the sand right in the uh, in the carpet uh, of the nozzle plate. It was really weird. And a few passes, and the Kirby was actually tipping over. Like, it was that heavy with sand. I could not believe it. But they just have a cheap Bissell bagless. So, of course, you know, and they don't clean very often anyway. They're redneck hillbillies. So, um, you know, I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just saying that's how they are. So... You know, um, this had a lot to do, and it did a great job, but I just turned it on today for the first time since that episode to try to adjust the height. I wanted to pre-adjust all these before the video, and a cloud of smoke and sand and dust just blew straight out at me, and the fan wouldn't even spin. Like, no air was getting to the bag, but then the brush roll was spinning, though, so something was happening. I don't know what happened, but finally, something broke free, and it's working fine now, but I don't know what was stuck in there. I guess it was a bunch of grit from that, um, but... I got it cleaned up, so I did actually sell Kirby's for a period of time when I was 19 and young and gullible and stupid. Um, I got a job uh, selling Kirby's. I was selling vacuums at Sears at the time and working at Disney part-time, and I saw this ad for selling vacuums or something, I don't remember, but they told me that I would have appointments and that I would be set up to go in houses and just, you know, I had a salary even if I didn't sell anything. and. None of that was true. I was knocking on the door. I actually knew what a Jehovah's Witness felt like at that point because, you know, people would slam the door in your face. It was just a mess, all the lies that we had to tell people, and I never got paid one cent for any of that. And 
completely ruined my life. I actually got uh, kicked out of the place I was living. I lost my car. So, you know, that, that distributor was just preying on young, gullible people, which is what I was. But I learned a very valuable lesson. So I still like Kirby vacuums, despite my experience with that awful uh, dealer. Um, but um, kind of hearkening back to that, over here, if you can see it, I have a very sweet vacuum cleaner friend who gave me a dirt meter for a Kirby. Now what this does, it's of course for the G-Series models, you just take off the bag and switch this on, and it's got little pads that go in there that are made out of the same material as the bag is. I actually use coffee filters when I'm playing with it, but then what you do when you're selling a Kirby is you just, um, you stick these pads in, you go over a few passes after the person is vacuumed with their vacuum, and then you take the pad and it's going to have dirt on it, you place it all over the house and you just make them disgusted by placing these filthy pads all over the house and show them what was in their vacuum and what, or what was in their carpet and that what their uh, vacuum had left behind. So uh, once you reach their level of tolerance for dirt, that's actually the words they use when they trained us, they'll buy the Kirby. So my favorite tagline was, either the dirt can stay and their Kirby can go, or the Kirby can stay and the dirt can go. What's your choice? And then of course, they were supposed to snap the Kirby up right at that point, and they wanted to until they found the price out. But uh, the other thing we would do is put the pads all over the place and have the lady sit down and say, have a seat right there on the couch. And she'd say, I'm not sitting on all that dirt. And you would say, well, you were doing it before. Why don't you do it now? And then, of course, she was supposed to buy the Kirby. Of course, she never did. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just start with the vacuums. Uh, we'll start with the oldest one and then move on to the newer ones. So... I have paper shreddings here. I didn't have any when I made the Electrolux video the other day, but um, I figured paper towels didn't do a very good job just being picked up by the vacuum. So I checked the mailbox, and now with all the junk mail, I have enough shreddings to last about six months. So uh, I put the Electroluxes there by the TV. I kind of rearranged. I put the Constellation that was in the corner over on that canister shelf thing there and moved the Diamond Jubilee out to be with its cousins, and I think it looks really good. So... I like that, and I like that I can see them all right while I'm sitting on the couch on the computer or whatever. So, anyway, let's go ahead and see how these Kirby's do. Okay, that was just one pass. Um, I didn't want to suck up too much dirt and not leave any for the rest, but uh, it did a great job, and uh, I just wanted to show the bag balloons so far out. I love how buoyant and bouncing that thing is. It really is a fun vacuum, so that's one of my favorite older Kirby's. I don't like the handle, though. The handle's just not comfortable. I don't know what they were thinking when they made that shape, but I guess they weren't thinking the people that had hands were going to hold it. I don't know what they were doing. But anyway, let's move on to the Heritage. Getting after I do it that I want to show a, a, di a picture of the bag inflating because that's one of my favorite things about a vacuum. So I, uh, I like to do that. All right, G5 with the Warren brush roll. I had no clue the exhaust from the motor was going to blow all that stuff uh, to the side like that. I'm not even going to show the bag inflating on the G5 because it barely does. The old ones are the ones that have the inflating uh, bag. Uh, the new ones, of course, still have the soft bag, but it doesn't blow up, so there's really no point. So I will show this one, and then that will conclude my video because I'm running out of time. I think YouTube only allows a 10-minute video. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, not bad for a $60 vacuum, actually. Looks really good. I just hope I don't like the new one, uh, the new Kirby that's supposedly coming out too much, because then I'll want one, and I don't have room. And I already have too many, so I'll have to get rid of the G5 if I get the new one. But those are my Kirbys. Thank you.